you kind of talked after New Orleans about after the New Orleans game, you guys decided we're going to take take away explosive plays and make that kind of the focus. Is is that does that limit what you can do defensively in other games? Just because you, you kind of have to make sure they don't happen. No, I I think um, you know we went into the game. Uh, obviously, every game you try to limit explosives. Um, I, I think, you know, we had a couple of issues in the game. One is that we missed a tremendous amount of tackles, uh, too many tackles. And, um, you know, it was from all position groups, really, D-line, linebackers, defensive backs. Now, we went in probably with more in our package, more checks in our package than any week. And, um, you know, they did some good things. They They did some tempo on us. And uh, at times we didn't execute some of the calls based on the tempo. Um, you know, there's some check with me's out there based on what they were, what they were in. And, you know, you can put that part on me. You know, sometimes, hey, here it is a tempo situation. Let's just line up and play. We had a couple check with me's in tempo where we didn't play fast. And I think as you look through the whole game, that was our issue is we didn't play fast and we didn't execute as well as we normally did. We don't tackle as well as we normally did. And I, you know, that's what we looked at today and yesterday as a, as a coaching staff was why didn't we play fast? And I think some of that tempo issue and some of the calls that we had in conflicted and kept us from playing fast. James. That's so when uh, Julian went down, obviously you all turned to Nick Cross um, what what did you think of the way Nick Cross performed and maybe what gives you that, that confidence in that moment, I guess, I guess compared to last year, to throw him in there and, and have him perform at the level that he did? Right. That's, that's great, James. Last week we talked about, you know, there's a lot on Nick's plate. He's got to be, a you know, free safety, backup strong safety, backup nickel, and he's got to be ready at any moment. So he went in there and we saw him. He made some tackles. I think the communication with Julian, it took us a little bit. You know, there's a little different communication mode with Julian in there than Nick. And uh, But I think as a game got on, the communication became better. And, um, you know, he, he made some plays. I think there were some times when back went to the flat and we got picked in there. And, um, you know, we didn't communicate that properly. So those things took place. Um, you know, it's one thing for me to sit here and say, boy, we didn't tackle very well. And this is on me or this is on the players. But what's the solution? And that's what we've been looking at this week, you know, last couple of days is, well, all right, what do we have to do? What do we got to get back to to playing fast? And uh, that's the solution. And that's what we're incorporating in the game plan now. I guess one quick follow up. Um... If Julian has to miss time, uh, how much confidence do you have in Nick to be part of that solution, just given uh, the not ups and downs of his career so far? Not to say like that harshly, but just the ebbs and flows of it when he's learning and, and playing and not playing, things like that. Well, I like his mindset. Uh, I don't know if I could have said that last year. You know, I don't know if there was complete trust with him out on the field. But now there is trust and he's going to get his chance to show us. He's going to get a chance to show his teammates. So he's a better communicator at the free safety spot. Now he just has to transfer that to the strong safety spot. Raven. Ahead of these pivotal last regular season games where you guys are trying to make that playoff push, how much are you really relying on the veteran guys like Z and Buck and Kenny to kind of get these younger guys ready, especially because you guys do want to make the playoffs and eventually make a run at it? Right. I think the, the reality is that we all know that we need to win these last couple of games here, you know, but at the same time when the veteran presence comes in, it still comes back to what we need to do. And if it truly is about us and how we played, well, we didn't play very well. And we need to go in and fix those things so we come out and play fast, play aggressively. And, um, you know, that would be the message from them, I'm sure. And let's get back to being us. JJ? Hey, Gus, when you look at this season, what's been kind of a, a common thread of games where the defense has been able to get uh, a decent number of sacks versus games where defense maybe hasn't been able to get a number of sacks? Well, I think that, you know, looking back at the last couple of games or when we didn't play well, you know, the backs have come alive against us. You know, um, Cincinnati, it was the screen game. You know, um, this past game, you know, Robinson did a good job. Both backs did a good job with against us. We gave up some explosive plays, whether it was, you know, them catching balls and, you know, on passes, uh, screen game or, you know, on some of the runs. So 
I think that's the common thread right now that we have to take care of is slowing down these running back type plays that uh, are getting yards against us. And then what we're doing well is you're right. If we can get pressure on the quarterback and, uh, you know, in games, we have a tendency to play pretty well. Uh, takeaways, uh, you know, plays that we normally make. We had three opportunities to get takeaways in that game where it was in our hands and could have made big plays and set up scores for a touchdown. If not, you know, Z, he could have scored on his. So we just didn't capture those opportunities and we need to games going forward. Kevin. Yeah, sorry about that, Coach. Um, how would you evaluate what you've seen so far from Juju Brent since he got back in the lineup a few weeks ago? Um, you know, he's he's an aggressive corner, um, likes to get his hands on him, uh, both him and J.J. Uh, he's been tackling pretty well uh, up to this point, so we'll see if that continues. He's going to have some opportunities, especially in this game. So, you know, he's still – you know, he hasn't had as many game reps as a, as a JJ. So, you know, each game he's learning more and more in the style of receivers that he's facing. But at this young stage where he's at, now we just continue to, you know, see him grow and really make big steps these last uh, games in the regular season. And then in a week where you guys don't tackle very well, how do you go about that in practice? Obviously, physicality this time of year is probably not something you do a whole lot of. You're right. And, you know, we preach that every rep is a tackling rep, even in walkthrough. And we've been walking through quite a bit. So it's got to be, a, you know, another point of emphasis with the style of backs that we're going to see, especially this week. And, um, you know, we got to take advantage of, even though it's a walkthrough, to really work on our angles and, uh, you know, our leverage principles and know where guys are going to be. George? That's how concerning is the – lack of tackling this late in the year, but also is that related to the tempo? Do you think? Um, I, I don't know. You know, we tackled pretty well last week. We had, you know, against Pittsburgh, I should say, we didn't have many missed tackles and um, you know, give credit to them that the back was really good, really good in space. And um, you know, we may have just gave them too much space in some of those. And that's what we got to look at some uh, it could be because of the call, Others where we were planning on being tight coverage, uh, we didn't execute it real well. So, you know, I think we just got to take a look at the backs that we're facing and how well they are in space and then have a plan and work accordingly. Nate? Hey, Gus, when you come off games like this, it always seems to challenge the leadership of the defense a little bit more. Uh, just what have you seen out of Zaire Franklin just that, since you got here that that's kind of made him one of those guys that can kind of – bring things together when they seem to, you know, some issues like this start to form. Right. I, I think the biggest message from guys like Zaire, uh, Buck, you know, Kenny is just make sure we play fast. You know, if we can go out there and play fast, we'll make plays. It might not be the perfect call. It might not be the perfect, you know, situational call, but if we play fast, we'll make plays. And I think in time like this, that's what the message is from them is let's play fast. We didn't play with a lot of energy uh, as much as I thought we would. And um, again, maybe that was because the package was big, maybe because there was a lot of checks in the package and it kept us from identifying some indicators, but whatever the case is, we'll learn more tomorrow when we meet with the players, but just some of the conversations we have now, I anticipate them saying more of that type of a conversation. You know, let's just make sure we play fast and do what we do.